comes to Hollywood, the biggest blockbusters usually contain the biggest effects. But when it came to making Lost in Space, a 90s update of a 60s television series, few realized just how complex it was going to be to film the future. It's insane. There is almost no shot in the movie without a special effects element. There's green screen, animatronic, CGI. It's remarkable. It looks perfect. Making things look perfect is tough, but when 15 companies were asked to complete 767 shots, the pressure was on to beat the record for the most digital effects in a movie. Lost in Space follows the Robinson family, a group of scientists who aim to make a planet on the other side of the universe habitable thanks to the construction of a hypergate. Made at the UK's Shepparton Studios, the Lost in Space effects teams were also British. First up with the Magic Model and Magic Camera Company, whose mixture of talents made the movie's opening battle sequence possible. Filming models against a pure colour and then replacing that colour with the correct background has been done for years. But as soon as enemy fighters switched from attacking cruisers to attacking the partially constructed hypergate, the problems got tougher. Rushing to the rescue comes Major Don West and his partner in their digital bubble fighters. Sitting inside a gyroscopic cockpit, the actor Matt LeBlanc was filmed by a camera whose exact movement and lens settings were recorded during each take. The data was then fed into software which would draw the bubble fighter, the background and the terrorist attackers around LeBlanc in perfect perspective. Showtime. Adding real explosions to the computer-generated image completed the illusion that we were in space and not in a studio. West is ordered to pilot the Robinsons to another planet, but when the ship is sabotaged, setting it on a course for the sun, Effect House electric image took over. Making a computer model of the Jupiter 2 from 1.7 million polygons meant it could change its shape as it launched into hyperspace, zapping our heroes out of one problem and into another. Computer. Map. I don't recognize a single system. We're lost. But the Robinsons soon find they aren't the only ones when they board the Proteus, a derelict starship. She's fascinating. What? Blarp was a small monkey-like creature in the original TV series, but its big screen debut demanded a lot more flexibility. Blarp was brought to life by Jim Henson's Creature Shop, experts at puppet design and performance. Initially, he was to be a mixture of physical and computer effects, but after it was found that traditional puppetry couldn't do everything that the director wanted, Blarp became totally digital. Post-production house Rushes had the task of removing puppeteers and inserting Henson's computer creature into the live-action footage. Although the original Blarp had to be removed from some shots, the result was actually better because the actors had been given something real to react to from the very start. <laughs> Not all of the Robinson's encounters were quite so friendly and the film factory was asked to build an army of hungry alien spiders. Mathematical systems were tested for animating the silvery swarm, but in the end, controlling the software by hand produced the required menace. Number crunching couldn't be avoided for sequences involving time portals, and here Cinesight developed a system of swirling fragments contained within a force field. But modeling any kind of particle system needs an artistic touch, as does the effort taken to combine a handful of elements together, often supplied by different effects teams. This film couldn't really have been made 10 years ago, and now, every, you know, just because of the enormous leap that's been made, now, it's now possible to do this kind of thing. Teamwork was the key to such a massive project. Sequences like holograms and helmet reveals as handled by Framestore were fairly self-contained, but they were the exceptions. Sharing so much data and using such varied systems could have been a disaster. And yet Lost in Space has proved that Britain can compete with the Hollywood digital establishment. So if you want to do something different, you have to be prepared to break the rules.